What is a custom control and why do we need them? So let's get started and understand what is the purpose of a custom control. So let me quickly switch to my presentation view and start writing about custom control. So one quick question to all of you, those who worked on WebDean Pro and BSP. If I ask you to design your own control, just the way you're using SAPM button by far, if I ask you to design your own control, can you do it in WebDean Pro? Is it possible? Is it possible if I ask you to design a completely new control, will you be able to do it in WebDIN Pro or BSP? Those who work with WebDIN Pro and BSP, anyone? Is it possible? Of course, not possible because those technologies are bottleneck for developers. So that's why we always say in interview or whenever you go to uh, any uh, you know technical discussion with regard to SAP UI5, then you will always hear this in the market that SAP UI5 doesn't become a bottleneck for developer. Okay, so what we say is SAP UI5 doesn't become a bottleneck for developer. Correct? Why we say this is because it is based on open standards and it allows you to also do things which you cannot do with the conventional web technologies like WebDIN Pro and BSP technology. Pretty much fair, right? So we will see one great example of such thing today in our today's class called custom control. So what is custom control and why they are used in reality? The reason behind the custom control is in case if there is a functionality which is not delivered by SAP, you can go and design your own control. Okay, SAP is giving you button, label, text, drop down, list. You know, lot of different variety of controls. But in case, in case, just in case, if you have some requirement where SAP doesn't fulfill your need by providing you the control, then in such cases, you can go with custom controls. Okay, You can design your own control. And that's what we will see today. So if you remember in one of the session, I was telling you that we do not have a heading control in UI5, right? There is no heading control, so which is typically produces an H1 tag. It's not there. So we'll see how to design a heading control in SAP UI5 way. Now, before we proceed, I will ask here two questions to you. My first question is, which is the super class of all UI controls which we saw by far in our system anybody we saw the control hierarchy chapter can anybody tell me the name of the super class which is having perfect answer majority of you giving correct answer but uh, i see a lot of problems some people just writing the library name some people just writing it not in the proper standard like camel case statement so it is sap ui core is the library name sap ui core is in small letters and then control C is capital. That's very important, guys, because it's case sensitive. So this is the super class for all the controls, which means when we want to design custom control, we will take this as our super class. Fine. That's your first thing. Second question to all of you, what is the keyword used to indicate inheritance in JavaScript? Perfect answer, it is extends. So we are going to extend SAP UI core control library, uh, basically control uh, object to create our custom control. Fair enough. So this is what we will be doing, guys. By extending it, we will be extending a standard UI5, uh, you know, control library to build our own control for our purpose. That's what we will be doing. And now to do that, what will be the syntax? 
so syntax is going to be we will have to define the dependency and then use our control class dot extend keyword okay and then inside this we will put the path or the name of the control <clears throat> then comma and then we will put here function sorry not function we will put curly braces and then inside this we have three different sections of this curly braces okay we will have three different sections inside this so first section is called metadata very important section metadata what is what does it mean i will explain you in a minute inside the metadata you will typically have properties of a control you will have aggregation right this is how you see any control designed in ui5 and third you see events of course you can have methods as well so this is all what you have typically inside the control definition a metadata of the control the second thing which you have is an init function okay and finally you will have renderer function which has two default argument orm and o control okay that's how you design any custom control in ui5 so you will have three different sections when you're designing your custom control a metadata section this describes all the properties events methods and aggregation of your custom control you remember that whenever we use let's say button or any control in ui5 we typically always uh, consume these properties events and methods correct so that's what we typically consume it all the time so you have to define them as your control properties aggregation because you are defining our control and giving a whole world an opportunity to make use of this control yeah then comes is the init function Init function is like constructor of your control when somebody instantiate the object of your control then this particular init method will be called so this can be used for initializing your attributes of basically properties of your uh, of your ui control and then comes is the renderer function very important now can anybody tell me what happens be behind the scenes when you are consuming a ui5 control what the ui5 framework runtime does anyone what is that ui5 framework runtime does when you basically write a code in ui5 using xml or javascript what it does behind the scenes anybody you remember my previous chapters what is that absolutely you're all right it basically converts your code to equivalent html code which browser can understand and this was covered in our previous chapter let me show you that so don't uh, think that this was not at all covered so here you see in this uh, 31 number slide we have discussed this in the past whenever you submit this code to ui5 runtime component and there is something called a renderer which converts this code to equivalent html and css and javascript code correct to the browser because browser understand these things directly that's why you need it correct so if you just come down once again you will see there is something called renderer method which we have noted down so what will be the functionality of this renderer method anybody can you guess what is that which we need to do now as part of this renderer function anyone what should we do now as part of this renderer function we should write the equivalent html code okay we should tell the system that this should be the equivalent html code which should be produced okay which should be produced that's what we need to do it an equivalent html code has to be has to be written for this okay so let's go ahead and do that so now i'm going to write an equivalent html code but how do you talk to browser how do you tell the browser that this is the equivalent html code for that you need an object you need an, a medium right and that's what this medium is orm orm is the object of the render is the renderer object to talk to the browser 
and tell the browser to put something in DOM that we can decide. Okay. Then next object which you see the default object is O control object. O control object is the self reference of your custom control. Okay. Just like in ABAP within the method we have me keyword or in, in, in JavaScript we have this keyword. Um, similarly here O control is the object of current control which we are designing okay that's what it is current control object of current control which we are designing with the help of this object we can access which is o control with the help of this object o control we can access properties okay we can access all the properties basically okay fine so let's go ahead and now um, create our first custom control in the system so let's go back and I'm gonna design it in a way that it's reusable okay guys so what I will be doing is I will design into a completely different separate file and that separate file uh, we will be defining our entire custom control from scratch fine and then once that definition is done we will use that custom control uh, library basically and then we will consume it consume it in our view so let's first build a used case so what i'm going to do is i'll just quickly um, execute our code and see what to do so i will execute our program which we are designing by far let me run this into an, another session so that we can work with all tab okay so here we see that we have a lot of different things so now uh, what i want is this more product data i want it to be as a h1 tag heading tag and ui5 doesn't give me an h1 tag by default okay ui5 framework doesn't uh, give me the h1 tag functionality basically so for handling h1 tag now I have to probably design a custom control myself so let's do that and then we will replace this more product data with that h1 tag okay so right now if you right click on this cons uh, the, the control and do an um, do an um, inspect element will you find that it's an h4 tag okay so just wanted to show you how will it look like later point of time I'm replacing it with h1 tag press enter so this is how it should look like oops it didn't it didn't reflect any change with respect to h1 okay but fine you will ultimately see an h1 tag which is little bolder than this okay and that's not provided by ui5 i'm going to design that control myself so let's go ahead and do that we will come back to web ide web app folder of course right click and now i'm putting a new folder called controls all my definition of custom control has to be in a separate folder right click new file and then I'm just gonna put the new file name let's say uh, my heading is the name of the control and then I'm gonna define scaffolding ui.define and then in this first thing comes is the dependency now I did a mistake guys I forgot to put JS extension for the file which is an important point without that you see the color coloring also not happening in my code and it's not giving me code completion so let's delete this and also recreate it with the JS extension so new file my heading dot JS so that's the JS extension SAP UI define and then of course the scaffolding uh, template which we have to create a function curly braces and then this function has to return something out basically so that's what we need to do so let me just make it little arrangeable yeah and then in this we will return something out and we will return like this something out and what we will return actually we will note down here 
the definition of our custom control so what is the dependency here you want to do you want to use anyone just now i showed you which is the dependency which is the library you will use to define your custom control anyone what is the dependency which library will you be using anybody which library i told told you to use to define yes sap ui core control so that's what you will define here on the top sap slash ui slash core slash control class that's a super class for all the controls and just put it here control and then now we'll we'll, we'll extend it so we'll say return and then i say um, i want to define control dot extend yeah so i'm extending it now okay i'm defining a new control control dot extend and then inside this control dot extend i'm going to write uh, as per our syntax the entire definition okay so we will be writing the definition of our custom control basically three sections which i mentioned you i'm going to write all those three sections okay so let's go ahead and do that so we will be writing all the three sections now one tiny mistake you see it's giving me an error here the reason is pretty simple i should since i'm returning the control object a created control object as a return parameter i should not use curly braces so this curly braces is unnecessary i should just return the control dot extend okay yeah correct you're right so that's what i should return and this extra semicolon is also a problem I save this and now in this control dot extend I'm gonna write the path full path so my fury is the namespace dot my library name library name is controls dot my heading and then come comma curly braces and here now you write three sections as I mentioned metadata Next section is comes is your init function. So you can leave these functions also empty without any implementation. Not a big problem. And then renderer function. And as we discussed, we should have two default arguments called ORM and OControl as part of your renderer function. We are ready. Yeah, that's it. You can see now. We have defined our uh, our return parameter as a control object out. Yeah, perfect. Seems nice. Hope you all understood. Let me repeat once again. So this is first the dependency declaration of the super control from which you're going to extend and create your custom control. That dependency is always sent as an object parameter to the method. And then you are just saying, I want to extend the standard UI5 control by defining my own control. And this is going to be the name of my own control. Three sections, metadata, init, and renderer. In the metadata, you can put the properties, events, aggregation, and functions. And of course, leave them as a blank at this point. So I just put properties, empty, events, empty, aggregation, empty and methods empty now if you just want to relate this you can also go back to sap ui5 sdk and just check for a uh, control documentation in ui5 sdk so search for maybe um, any control in ui5 in fact you can see this also fragment over here control you see you have properties events methods and of course you will also have aggregation as we are experiencing it by far in our previous units that we typically have all these uh, all these sections for every control you see you have properties okay so let me just come to button class here and show you all the properties events aggregation and uh, methods basically so you see you have properties associations events methods and constructor constructor means all the your init function basically this is your init function constructor okay so these are all the properties events aggregation and methods in it and renderer now i want to do very tiny small thing now as of now i just going to tell the browser that you write for me an h1 tag when somebody use this control write an h1 tag for me and i say this is anubhav's class okay and that's what i wanted to produce 
as an HTML equivalent HTML remember guys the control means equivalent HTML for UI5 framework so now this this is your your own custom control anybody can use it fine so now let's go ahead and use it in our XML view so I'll go to our second XML view here it is and in this second XML view first we have to define the namespace so XML namespace and I can say Anubov equals to my library which is as uh, my fiori dot controls this is my library see this is my library guys in which all the controls are present yeah so now anubav is my library name <coughs> so library is a collection of js files right so this is first js file in this library and now just come to my uh, okay now this is something which is used in fragment if you remember we had used it in fragment so I'm just going to remove it from here and put it inside our fragment so go to fragments for additional data and put the library over here Anubhav with the name Anubhav and now I just use this Anubhav first of all I'm removing the title out of uh, out of the simple form I'm removing the title completely and just putting here Anubhav colon and now my control name is my heading don't do mistake with case sensitivity be little careful with it and that's it my control custom control is now part of my XML code so anybody can guess what will happen as a result what will you see as a result of this anyone can you guess what will happen on the UI anyone what do you think will happen on the UI when I now execute it what will you see on the UI as a new content what content you will see now on the UI what did we design what did we put no we should see an h1 tag an h1 tag if you remember in our HTML chapter it's going to produce an h1 tag with this text whatever I had put let's experience it so come back yes this is Anubo's class that's what you're going to see on the UI so refresh the page hopefully it should work and then we'll see yes voila you see this is Anubo's class it has produced a, a, an output this is what SAP UI 5 framework was not allowing me because it was not having an H1 control and I had designed my own control and published it Yes, that's the beauty of UI5. It allows you to design your own controls. You can write the equivalent HTML and people who use your control uh, will leverage the power of it. But do we do it very often in projects? Of course not. We first see if there is a support from UI5 for certain things directly. If it is not there, then unfortunately we have to go with this custom control development approach because this would lead to maintenance on your head only imagine it's your custom code basically you are responsible for it completely SAP will not take any responsibility but yes in projects where you have extensive UI5 development where none of the requirements of your existing UI5 controls from SDK suit your purpose you can go with the development of custom control on your own yeah that's what you can go for so let's go ahead uh, and now do something interesting over here now let me add another uh, control inside the fragment so I will add another Anubha basically so hope you understanding it that I am adding another control just like you know you are adding button guys similarly you can now add this control so what will happen now on the UI any guess anyone what will happen on the UI now any guess what do you think will happen uh, on the UI now of course you will see two times the same content gets displayed just like you put two button controls similarly you see two times it has put now do you think guys that we put this code put this uh, control for uh, just uh, put this control for displaying this is Anubhav's class all the time what do you think if you put a button always in UI 5 will it always show a fixed text or is that you want what text you want to display that it will display right so what do you think do you want always a hard-coded text to be part of this h1 tag or do you want the person who using the control should define this text and that text should appear right 
just the way we we send the text property for this button approve and then it become uh, the text of the button right so we should be or the person who is consuming the control should be able to de pass the text of the of the h1 tag to you right very important point so for that to happen what we will do is we'll define now a property so let's come to properties section and here we will define a new property let me give the new property name as let's say um, text property whatever like you can give you can give spider-man that's not a problem and that's what my new property is and what I will do is I'll make use of this property and uh, embed this property value into my code so can anybody tell me if you have a property in UI 5 what is that you will have by default available if you have any property yes you will have setter getter method so I want to now remove the hard coding here okay and just want to do little interesting stuff so I will now access that property using getter method but you need an object right to call a method you need an object now which object shall I use to call the method get spider-man anybody perfect answer Kumar you understood the concept this is the object of the control itself so you have a property inside this control called spider-man so I say O control which is the object of my control UFF control which I'm creating itself and then say get spider-man notice here the spider-man is a property and when you do get method it should follow naming convention first letter is small next consecutive word first letter is capital so you may see Anubha has put spider-man small but he is accessing property using s capital that's what the naming convention is for getter and setter methods save this now you watch magic so what will happen I go to my view basically my fragment and now here I can pass the value spider-man equals to my personal data and then another spider-man equals to wow save this watch carefully on the UI what will happen now user is who is using control is passing the text and that text gets appeared on the UI that's the beauty of properties hope it's clear so there are two two job roles here guys in UI 5 one person so there are a lot of job opportunities created in UI 5 these days okay so there are a lot of different job profiles different roles with people work with so let me quickly tell you what each person does in a company so first role is the core UI 5 developer which is what majorly this course we are focusing on this course we focused on developing ui5 and fury applications right so these persons will use existing or custom controls and design the software or basically code the software okay this is the UI 5 developer or fury developer uh, person does okay that's what we have focused in this course then comes another something called UX designer UX designer role is to use build tool or mock-up tools to design to design the user experience how will it look like what are all the colors how will you put different tables where will you put controls so this person will only focus on design design part of the UI 5 yeah this person only focus on the development then comes is the custom code developer this developer only focus on developing custom controls who he would develop the custom control just like SAPM button is a control he will develop a lot of custom controls for you and you can consume those custom controls in your app that's the third job profile in the market and then comes is a fury consultant job fury consultant responsibility to activate standard fury apps okay extend them and also work with launchpad configure the SAP fury launchpad do the necessary roles authorizations and stuff like that so this is more like a basis work plus developer work okay fury consultant so these are all the main 
four different job profiles you will see in the market people are doing and then of course there are uh, documentation people who are just writing documentation there are people who are just doing uh, basis pure basis work so more or less this is what four types of jobs you will see it in the market for you now with with the current course we are actually uh, getting our hands into this part which we are doing today of course this part is our core business and this is what we will see some glimpse of it okay and if you want to go deep dive inside fury consultants work then you have to subscribe my next course online fury trainings.com and here you will see a concept or a course for fury consultant so there you will see how to design the fury launch pad and other stuff like that so one second let me pause this video okay so you see fury enhancements launch pad and web ide so this course is, will explain you the architecture of the entire gateway in detail different variety of deployments and then how to activate create roles basis work basically how to create roles authorizations for a user for a designer using launchpad designer theme designer for custom branding purpose um, and then creating your fury launchpad configuring login logout screens uh, working with cloud connector uh, mock server then you have uh, how to deploy different uh, different apps using standard templates in detail deploying them uh, into the system and activating your uh, launchpad tile creating groups catalogs um, and attaching them to the role and all of that will be uh, will be covered extensibility very important point how do you extend the standard fury apps i have taken an example of real time timesheet app and showed how do you extend them uh, standard fury app and deploy them as a custom how to extend o data services and also used a kpi modeler concept from s4 hana to create an analytical app so this is what in nutshell in this course is covered which will take you to a little advanced level and now there is also another uh, job role recently which is getting so popular abap come fury developer this is basically s4 hana consultant s4 hana technical consultant who knows abap also okay and who knows little bit of fury also so here what they do they build pure analytical apps on s4 hana and for that you need to have knowledge on ABAP on HANA which includes topics like CDS views very important and annotations and using that you can build quickly a Fury application and then deploy that in your S4 HANA system so that's another job profile getting so much of popularity again the prerequisite for this is ABAP on HANA and that's already I am offering as a new course ABAP on HANA and recently published in free interview questions on ABAP on HANA guys prepared by one of my student her name is Charu she has prepared this interview question by going through my sessions on ABAP on HANA and I think now everybody can leverage it so you can download these interview questions absolutely free from internet from my website and make use of it before you have any interview on ABAP on HANA if at all okay of course if again I repeat no copy paste uh, you have to go deep dive uh, in the concepts then come and attend the course otherwise at least you you are good to go ahead with it okay yes s4 hana concepts like cds view virtual data modeling creating analytical apps on s4 will be covered as part of this course that's main thing now after completing these three courses nobody can touch you you can work on s4 hana projects easily believe me easily very easily you can work on sap s4 projects after completing all three of these courses nobody can touch you you will have deep knowledge of the technology stack right from top to the bottom presentation application and database all three layers you will be mastered into in this course i have also taught hana modeling introduction to hana evolution of sap hana database yeah you just check out some free videos here on my youtube channel i had posted a playlist so just go to youtube search for abap on hana uh, and then you will find my video here it is the second one and you click on my name anubo oberoi it will take you to my channel and after going to my channel go to playlist and in the playlist here you will find 
the ABAP on HANA tutorials. So there are some free videos I had posted for you to have a look at it and experience how will it be. So in this, you see, I've also taught how to set up your ABAP on HANA server yourself. So you don't need to run behind anybody to set up your server. I taught you how to set up your own ABAP on HANA server yourself. Yeah. Even we had discussed detailed about SQL scripting. Nobody will teach you SQL script uh, when you go for ABAP on HANA or SAP HANA course. I've seen many, many trainers teaching HANA, but they don't touch much on SQL script. They will simply do copy paste of a ready-made sample to show you output. They don't teach you SQL script. Um, you know, the modularization, the coding, the techniques, uh, the user-defined function procedures, they don't teach you in detail. It's covered in my course uh, in ABAP on HANA itself. So combination of both HANA DB and ABAP together and how ABAP on HANA works with latest techniques like ABAP managed data procedure, ABAP database connectivity, CDS views, proxy objects, transportation, analytical tools, uh, creating Fury app on VDM data model in S4, all that is covered. And then if you want to take yourself to a completely new level, I would say go with this one, end-to-end -end application development in cloud. That's HANA cloud platform course, basically. So HANA cloud platform, and which is now known as SAP cloud platform, is getting a lot of, lot of popularity in the market right now. So if you want to develop a few complete application, Java application in HCP and deploy it with Odata service. You can go with this course. In this, I started with core Java, basically. So core Java, Java Persistence API, Eclipse Link Library, GNDI Lookup, ODBC, JDBC drivers, then uh, Apache Olingo framework, Maven dependency management, Tomcat tool, SAP HANA Cloud Platform, SDK, uh, and then exposing the Odata service from a shared access HANA database, and then consuming it into a Fury app built also into the cloud, deploying it in HANA Cloud, uh, HANA Cloud Platform Cloud Portal, and then exposing it complete solution, complete cloud solution to the users and managing roles, groups, catalogs into the into the HANA Cloud Platform and authorizations for the users with destination configuration and stuff like that. All that is taught and covered in this course. Complete cloud-based solution can be built using this particular course. So that's uh, about you know the complete stack of learning with this uh, with this knowledge. I think you are unbeatable, untouchable in the market with the current set of scenarios, current set of technologies. This is what is going hot in the market right now. Okay, as of now. Okay, let's continue. So these are all the different job profiles. So as you see here, the custom code development, sometimes if it's simple, you can do it, but typically there are developers, dedicated developers hired for that, who does the development of custom controls themselves into, uh, into, the, into the project. And you, your duty is just to consume them. So just consume it, that's it, you are done. But if your company says you have to only do all the work, then okay, fine, no problem, you can set up and define your own custom control. Let's do some more interesting stuff in this custom control now. So what I'm gonna do is I'll add another property. Let me add it a color property. Whatever name you like, you can give it. And then I'm gonna build the CSS accordingly. If you all remember the CSS chapter, yeah. So what we will do now, I'm gonna build a CSS. So I'm just gonna say here in this called style property equals to single quote, color, colon, and then I'm going to add the color property using o control dot get color, and then I just going to end this, save it, and now come back to fragment and see the magic. So I'll just now pass color for this as blue, and color for wow as red. Okay, so guess what will happen? Um, as a result, the building HTML, the, the HTML which gets built in, which gets created, it will have now the color inside as a style, and you would see my text in a different colors now. So refresh and voila, you see the text has been converted to different colors, and that's all authenticated because you are using SAP UI5 framework to define your custom control. That's how SAP had defined all these controls, what you see. They have created a renderer for all of them. 
different properties aggregation and events you pump in the data it produces the output for you same way the way we are doing our custom control we are pumping the color data based on that the output is changed because basically it's equivalent HTML is getting produced which will which we, which you will feel like you know okay this is my custom control actually behind the scenes it's all an equivalent HTML plus CSS code which gets created and submitted to the browser because browser don't understand UI5 browser only understand HTML CSS and JavaScript correct so that's what we are doing by writing a renderer to convert an equivalent HTML and CSS code great now what else so you see over a period of time if you want to add more and more style properties it will the code will become very cumbersome right it will become so big so to avoid such a situation we can break down the piece of code into small pieces let me show you how so orm.write you will start with h1 tag okay that's first thing and then you can use orm.add style in this now you can add one by one all the style coding what you need so property name and property value o control dot get color like this so what this statement does it writes the style code into a buffer okay it writes the style code into a buffer and you can just add all the styles what you need so I say color and I let's say also use border and then I'll say o control dot get border I just come here say border and then yeah once this is done I'm happy with all my style code so I will flush the buffer and I'll say from the buffer whatever is there you give it to the browser so I say oh, uh, rm dot write styles this will now flush the buffer and whatever is there in buffer will be now written into the browser okay so this is better you can see it's modularized easily easily you can understand and make the changes and add your style uh, code to the code to the uh, final result set and then finally of course you have to close um, uh, the the h1 tag and append your text which is o control dot get spiderman i guess that's my property name plus h1 tag should be closed so that's your better way of writing the same code with its styling now border property is also in place so let's make use of it over here so I'm just going to add a border for wow so I just say border equals to two pixels solid red save this let's come back refresh the page oops something is not right press F12 and see what went wrong and you see ORM is not a function so I think we are doing some mistake let's go back and check so it's here ORM it's saying not a function okay I forgot to do a write statement guys very important because I'm gonna write it into the dome that's the function name after ORM refresh and voila you see a uh, two pixel solid red color border is um, is appearing around my second text I have not given a border for first one so it's not coming now you can also define some default values for your property quite easily because that's what the init function is built for so what you can do is you can say this dot set and I can say border yeah you see it's giving me code completion and I can say two pixel solid black if there is no border property given for a control this will be the default value which will appear for my control and now you see a two pixel solid black border is coming for the first control because I've not given any border value for second one I've given a border value so that gets overwritten with the default one okay that's the beauty of your custom control in SAP UI5 you can build your own control that's not all but you also now can extend a standard UI5 control based on your choice so let me take an example so you see this button over here now what is what is the event which button offers can anybody tell me what are all the different events a button control offers it only offers a press event there is no other event other than press tap is obsolete so press is the only event which button offers now when will the press event gets called anybody 
when will the press event gets called anyone when will the press it when you click on it correct when you click on the button that time it gets called that's the user action which triggers an event click event right now my company says that i want to trigger an event when i focus on it right you might have seen this when you focus on something it triggers an event now is it possible with ui5 framework to use an event which triggers when you focus on the button is it given in the list is there any event which triggers when you focus on the button can you attach to an event when you focus on a button there is nothing right now but still i want that functionality in my coding how can i achieve it how can i achieve it so absolutely you will now extend a button class which means all the features of button you will take it as it is and on top of it you will add your own functionality that's why we say sap ui5 doesn't become a bottleneck for developer you can even extend standard ui5 controls based on your need if there's something which is not satisfying the requirement i remember one chapter where i was discussing about something and you said is this possible then i checked there was no property there was no event yeah and that that's the 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 real use case why you use a custom control feature because if something doesn't give you the the required functionality by itself then you can definitely go with the custom control you can extend that control and you can go with the custom control feature that's the beauty of using sap ui5 so let's go ahead and now do this for a button code so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i will define another custom control and that's going to be inheriting this time from button class not from core class so let's do that right click and now uh, just say new file and i say super button this is a super button code okay dot js of course because all is javascript is folding template and then dependencies inside the box and then function curly braces and this should return a uh, object of the control now one question to all of you what will be your dependency now anyone what will be your dependency what is that you're trying to do what is that you're trying to extend now anyone what is that you're trying to extend now anybody what will you extend now absolutely you will extend a button con code so existing ui5 button you will be extending so let's write it here in the dependency the existing uh, one so i'll just put here and say sap slash m slash button that's going to be my button code and i just say button over here and then i say return button dot extend okay and then of course my complete path my fiori dot my folder name is controls dot and my control uh, is super button that's what i'm defining be careful it's case sensitive if you do mistake there's no way out you got to now check whole code once again okay great that's the definition so i want to tell the system there are properties so sorry it all comes in metadata three sections remember never forget these three sections init function and renderer okay so do you want to also change the look and feel of the button of course not then we don't touch the renderer we just keep it empty do you want to initialize something nothing then you just also keep it empty which means it will call the super class code if you just leave it here it will just call the super class code as it is it won't change anything for you okay that's very important for you to understand it won't change anything for you so that's what we are doing now we are just keeping it curly braces which means called the super class we don't want to do anything only in the metadata section that to in events i am now going to define a new event and i will call this event as let's say uh, a mario so i'm defining a new event called mario and putting an empty curly braces which means any function can attach to the mario this means any function can attach to mario any object can attach to mario event but now this event when should it trigger so there is no event provided by the button class that's why we are developing it so we have to now rely on a standard javascript event so can anybody tell me the javascript event for uh, when user 
माउस ओवर ऑन एलिमेंट इट्स अ होवर आई डोंट थिंक सो यू सी गाइस दिस इज द जावा स्क्रिप्ट इवेंट नेम okay this is the javascript event name on mouse over whenever you take your mouse on to a control this is the event which triggers try let's try so you see there is a smiley i take my mouse on the smiley it becomes bigger i remove it it goes slow i take it again becomes bigger so that's what happens that's the mouse on mouse over event guys this is a standard javascript event which triggers when user takes the mouse on the control so we will attach to this one and when user does this we will propagate the call to our custom event okay we will propagate the call to custom event so i will come here after renderer i will just say on mouse over and you see guys web ide is giving me code completion for that on mouse over yes yeah on mouse over and that's what it is doing and this is of course a uh, something called function we need to attach to it now now can anybody tell me if i want to call an event if i want to trigger an event of my control what shall i do anybody which method gets created by default for every event in ui5 who will answer this question which event gets created which method gets created for any event created in my Uh, in my uh, control no incorrect answer which method just like setter getter method for every property which methods gets created in ui5 for every event you all have forgot no not on mario let me take you back to the previous ppts where this was also covered as funda fox so for every property there will be one setter getter method similarly what else gets created for every event that's what i am now trying to search in my funda fox let me search that so what happens behind scenes let's see and let's see call function js that's jquery chapter actually okay for every property setter and getter method gets created yes here it is so for every property setter and getter method okay i didn't taught you this for every event let me also taught you this for every event a fire event name and attach event name and deattach event name methods gets created automatically so here we created a new event called mario you will see a fire mario method which gets created by default so you just say this dot fire mario yeah that's it that's it we are done now let me explain you once again quickly what did we do we defined a sub class a child class by inheriting from a standard button class we have defined a custom event called mario which we want to trigger when user take the mouse on the button that's when we want to trigger this so we have to now rely on a standard javascript event and whenever this event comes i am propagating the call to mario event i am saying the system fire the mario and then when user is using the control they will put mario event and put a function that function will get triggered which user is which user is putting okay so user will attach a function to this mario event and ultimately when user mouse over it triggers mario and whatever function is written at front of mario by user will be triggered okay so let's see that so now i'm going to use this button control in the bottom of the toolbar so let me just do that in the second view so i come down to the second view okay where is my second view it's not used i come here and now again reference the library so xml namespace whatever name i like i can put it let's say foo and i say my fiori dot 
controls is the library name and in that I have a button so let me put a foo button foo and I say uh, super button if you remember this was the name I've given and then of course all the properties which you have for a button control will be available for you okay so I say super button okay and then of course press event is available for you you can say change mode you can use press of course but now my interesting point is Mario and I say on Mario and I want to now trigger the Mario event what will happen when Mario event is triggered which which triggers basically on mouse over watch carefully when we will test it so I come here on Mario function I'm just going to write some functionality over here and I say maybe I will give a message box so sap.m.message box api dot alert and I say wow I have extended standard functionality of UI 5 yeah that's what you did save it and let's test this up now refresh you see a new Super Mario button uh, sorry it's not working there is something wrong press F12 and see what went wrong t dot in it is not a function that's the problem if you come back to your control you see this in it is not a function let's remove this not required save it come back and refresh once again and wow you see a super button got created now what I'll do is I just hover on edit button nothing is happening yeah now are you ready guys what shall I do to trigger my Mario event anybody what shall I do to trigger my Mario event what do you think should happen just hover your mouse onto the button and voila wow I have extended standard UI 5 functionality beautiful this is what something UI 5 was not offering you you have extended the button and now you have got this feature added to the standard UI 5 button by extending the control if you want to contribute like this to SAP UI 5 framework there is a github library which is available in um, for open UI 5 and open UI 5 is exactly the same thing you can extend the standard UI 5 control and uh, submit a change request to SAP if SAP thinks that what you did is an amazing stuff you you have designed a new control or existing control feature then SAP approves the change and it goes finally with the SAP UI 5 framework your code you can influence SAP and tell okay see this is what I designed can you put it into the main library so there is a github resource for open SAP sorry open UI 5 where you can submit your changes by extending standard UI 5 controls or uh, creating your custom control let's have a look at quickly the code once again what did we do for this so once again I come back I have defined a new JavaScript file where I had put the dependency this time on a button and I'm saying extend the button control put my namespace my path of the control and just define the metadata with the new event called Mario now this Mario event triggers uh, with the help of a JavaScript event because we don't have any uh, any other thing because browser only understand JavaScript so browser throws this event on mouse over when you take the mouse which would then uh, we will propagate to the Mario event because we cannot hard code the function here it should be provided by end user who is using your control so what we we typically do then is later on once this design is done we go to the view we will just put the dependency as something foo whatever name you like you can put here anuba also again not a problem but that's the, the namespace so that's the namespace of your library and then you, you can come down and where you have this library name anuba just put it here that's a path that's a namespace of the library and then you put your button name and then Mario event of course which will uh, be preceded with an event name uh, sorry a function name which triggers when user hover onto the control in this function we have written an alert statement using message box throwing a message to test if when I hover the mouse is it triggering so it's not even allowing me to click it's just when I hover on the mouse uh, onto the button it's triggering my event so that's the whole uh, uh, development what we have done okay 
is there any option to use these custom controls globally so that we can use them on all projects that's the best option you see you have created here a control uh, folder put this control folder in all projects but then you say if you modify something in one project that will not be modified in another one so for that you have concept of component.js reusable component.js concept okay component embedded in another one but also on the other side if you see that you developed it today but now every developer want to enhance it further with their own style so then you give the folder to everyone let them reference this folder in their uh, in the fury project and also they can modify because it's a uh, it's a, a deep reference which they do uh, not a, co a reference which is uh, by reference so uh, th that's when you can then reuse it into your uh, any of the projects it's actually that's why i developed in a separate js file because it becomes reusable if you do it this way if you write it directly in the controller then it is embedded in your controller that's why i used separate folder for defining them as a as a separate thing component js we are yet to come to that chapter it's still far away so just hold on uh, we will come to the chapter of component.js it's a very important ingredient of ui5 in fact without component.js you cannot integrate with launchpad if you want to integrate your fury app as seamless integration with fury launchpad you have to have component.js in your project without which integration will not work very important point uh, to note okay so that we will we will come to that unit in fact uh, it's not too far we are about to reach to that unit in next two or three units we'll reach to component rgs is it used to provide own topic uh, tooltip for uh, elements of uh, tooltip feature is already there for a standard button so you don't need to worry because you extended standard button all features of standard button are also available to you let me show you so i'll go back to the view and just use the tooltip because since it's inheriting from the standard button all the features of standard button anyways gets inherited of course you won't see this tooltip because the moment i'm hovering uh, it is uh, lead, leading to an action to trigger let me show you for normal button a tooltip feature so tooltip equals to let's say my as edit button or i say click to edit the data save it and let's come back refresh and just hover on to the edit button and you will see click to edit the data you see the tooltip is coming up so that's the standard feature tooltip property it's there already okay so click on edit and now you see you are in the edit mode or oh, by mistake i did a hover and it triggered my event over there okay git developer is custom control developer right no 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 git is just a repository concept i will touch upon git in this course so don't worry why you need git is very simple reason now pradeep let's say will you alone develop the whole application in your company will you alone develop whole application in your company or will you have a team of developers who will develop any anybody you will have a team of course right so let's say you have a people of four four people a team now what happens is you made one change in the project will you email that project to your colleagues all three colleagues and if they make a change will they email you the project changes and you all the day you guys all uh, just uh, circulating emails and making changes of each other in your file no you need a repository where you store the project and do uh, just like in ABAP, we have a program. You're working with a program, another developer can't edit. It's in the server. And then uh, when you go to SC38 and open the program, it opens from load from the server, right? And when you activate the changes, goes to the, the server, gets committed to the server, right? So that's a repository, a BAP repository. Similarly, we have a Git repository concept. When you have multiple people working on same project how do they organize themselves how do they work as a team to work with fury projects that's where we use git repository it's a repository for all the java related development or html5 related development ui5 related development where you can keep all the files centrally in a repository of course it also controls the version so repository 
scheme and version management that's all will be done by git we will look at the tutorials for git and if you want to just uh, check out more about git it's very famous actually the whole world is using git and this you, you just go to github.com or check on youtube github tutorials you will find hell lot of tutorials on git okay so this is what uh, we use as a repository management system and version control management system suppose somebody did a mistake and you want to roll back to the previous version so today it's not possible it's all local but you can do it when you use git so that's also an interesting feature what git gives you and the main usage of git is it's a distributed version management control system okay as compared to other uh, repository systems like perforce if you heard about perforce uh, that, that the, these are not distributed but git is a distributed repository management system you will see it in, a, in our upcoming chapter how we can use it this is something a new topic I'm including in current batch it was never ever covered in my previous batches so I'm covering it in, in this batch as a new topic okay so this topic plus extensibility scenario which was one request have come and then a little bit on a UX developer what your UX developer does these three topics are uh, you know I'm going to include one from my side two from your request no more further topics allowed otherwise we'll we have I have to then skip some important topics which you need to know okay then in detail if you want to know about extensibility and stuff you know what you need to do I already showed you today the, the the course which you should go for for a deep extensibility concept understanding launchpad designing and stuff like that which is a fury consultants job but typically in a company even uh, you you consider to be a fury expert then uh, they will come to you only for doing all this stuff okay this is what I observed slowly slowly people your manager uh, your your management your your people around you they will after you complete this they will consider you as an expert in the company and slowly they will ask you to do this work also this work also this work also and this work also because they don't know what's going on okay people believe me people don't even know it's all rumors I see people talking in cafeteria uh, I am going to learn UI 5 uh, okay then another person is saying hey don't learn UI 5 UI 5 is not that good learn fury fury is better yeah so this is how people talk uh, they just there are rumors there are people in the company who just know half knowledge they don't know complete end-to-end -end picture so that that becomes a problem uh, because these rumors will confuse you okay so this is a typical uh, setup in a company in, in a good company where you have different developers for doing different stuff okay they're dedicated UX designers who just focus on branding uh, designing uh, positioning of elements but yes if uh, you are the only one uh, who knows something about it you also get this kind of uh, work but that's good we are here for work we are here to leverage the opportunity and believe me if you do all this work yourself in your company then your importance becomes higher and higher and you have chances to become architect senior architect soon in your company so better to don't worry don't be afraid learn things properly and utilize each each and every opportunity because people are hungry of opportunities and if you can grab them before them you are always in an advantage company will always think for you a manager will always think that if you leave then something will collapse so manager will not let you leave the company your importance will increase your of course this will also reflect in your salary definitely and that's our main goal to make our dependency higher in higher and higher in the company and the team so you will get respect when you do sweating you will automatically get respect of your colleagues they will all be afraid of you okay people will respect you when you have the right knowledge and when you delivering with the quality so don't forget to follow standards never do copy paste with that it's a wrap see you tomorrow we see some interesting concept coming tomorrow google map integration will look at with fury have a nice day and goodbye